Ladies and gentlemen, in the late 1950s, about one billion people, or one-third of the world's population, were going hungry. In response to this, scientists, policymakers, farmers, and many others took action to boost agricultural production and productivity. Over the last 50 years, they've brought modern science to bear on agriculture. They've constructed and rehabilitated rural roads and irrigation systems. They've developed cultivation practices that conserve water and soil fertility. They've introduced policies to encourage production and distribution of more and better food. They've improved the availability, access, and quality of food, the three pillars of food security. Today, one billion people still go hungry. In a sense, this may look like failure. And it really is. One billion people still food insecure is a tragedy on a grand scale. But from another angle, the result is an astounding success. The absolute number of people who are hungry has remained the same, while the relative proportion of the hungry has decreased as the world's population has doubled since the 1950s. Today, over 5 billion people are food secure. In other words, there have been successes in agricultural development. Unfortunately, these successes have often been overshadowed by the gloom and the doom, by the calamities and the crises that play out in our newspapers, on our radios, and on our televisions. The Millions Fed Initiative was designed to identify, assess interventions in agricultural development that have substantially reduced hunger and malnutrition. It was designed to document and synthesize evidence on where, when, and how these interventions have succeeded. And it was designed to share lessons that can help inform and improve policy and investment decisions in agricultural development for our future. So how did we proceed with this? What did we do? Well, first, we threw the net out. That is, we, we set up a global call for nominations. We had a wide-ranging series of expert interviews and consultations. And we had a far-reaching review of the literature on agricultural development. Ultimately, we identified about 250 potential cases. It would help if I used the PowerPoint. <laughs> Pardon. Second, we sorted the catch using the following criteria. First we determined that the intervention must be in a developing country and must tackle an important food security problem. We said that the intervention must exist at some considerable scale of operation, not a district level pilot project or something along those lines. We said that the intervention must have been implemented within the last 50 years and that it must have been something that was socially or economically sustainable or otherwise viable. And importantly, we determined that the intervention must be supported by well-documented and rigorous evidence of measurable impact on food security. With guidance and insight from an international panel of experts, we narrowed the list down and commissioned technical studies to synthesize and assess evidence for each case. These commissioned studies were rigorously peer-reviewed, and what we're sharing with you today are the highlights of these studies that are compiled in the book that you saw outside. These are the 20 proven successes highlighted by the Millions Fed Initiative. The successes are rich and diverse in nature. They're varying in terms of time, space, and character. They're global, they're regional, they're national, and they're definitely local. And they're illustrative of a wide range of pathways to success. Of course, we recognize that there are many other successes in agricultural development that are not covered here. I mean, this is not an exhaustive volume. In some cases, the successes are re still relatively small, waiting to be scaled up. In other cases, there are successes that are just too recent to have withstood the test of time. And in other cases, there are real successes on the ground, but they're just not yet documented or sufficiently evaluated. To this end, we hope that this research, the Millions Fed Initiative, will stimulate new efforts to identify, document, and substantiate successes that are still out there or still in the making. So let me walk you through a stylized version of the pathways to success, the pathways of 
of agricultural development and their evolution over the last 50 years. The early interventions offered here in, in Millions Fed, some date back to the 1950s, when the focus was on intensifying staple food production by increasing yields and minimizing losses to pests and disease. Much of the work in those days focused on the major staples, rice, wheat, maize, and expanded to other staples such as sorghum, millet, and cassava. But come the 1970s, concerns emerged over the implication of rapid agricultural development on equity and the environment. This encouraged the introduction of community-driven and environmentally sustainable approaches to agricultural development. The work in this period expanded to cover issues such as wa water, soil, and fertility uh, management, all of which contribute to food production and food security in the long run rather than in the immediate run. Community forestry in Nepal, one of our case studies, for instance, uh, community soil, land, water rehabilitation in the Sahel, another one of our case studies. In the 1980s, attention shifted to a much more market-oriented approach to agricultural development. This is the period of structural adjustment programs and, and uh, market liberalization programs. During this period, new emphasis was given to getting the prices right and capitalizing on market efficiencies for buying and selling of food and other agricultural commodities, for buying and selling of fertilizer and other agricultural inputs, and for buying and selling of land and even technology. The emphasis on markets at this time also opened up new opportunities for an expansion into non-staple tradable crops as an important source of income and income diversification for the rural poor, for rural entrepreneurs, and for many others. In this area, we've seen successes in the production, processing, and marketing of fruits, vegetables, legumes, pulses, dairy, livestock, and even fish. Large-scale economic policy reforms have also contributed to food security and to transforming the agricultural sector and the larger context within which agriculture operates. Here, reforms have addressed policies such as exchange rates, interest rates, and monetary policy, tariffs and trade policy, uh, subsidies, taxation and fiscal policy, and ultimately helping convert the agricultural sector into an engine of growth and an engine of food security. Finally, while massive gains have, gains have been achieved through these five pathways that I just mentioned, I think it's fair to say that increasing food access and availability has, has seen a good time, uh, good days, but far less has been achieved in improving food quality and human nutrition. Nevertheless, there have been some successes in the field of improving food quality and human nutrition in recent decades. For example, interventions that promote the consumption of healthy, micronutrient-rich food. So let me take you through two successes to give you a flavor of Millions Fed. Uh, then my colleague Rajul will continue with several more. In the 1950s, farmers in North America, in South America, and in other regions of the developing world were confronted with a major threat to global wheat production. Rusts, a type of uh, fungi capable of decimating wheat and spreading via the wind across vast distances. To tackle this threat, a group of scientists began a rust-resistance wheat breeding program, citing much of their work in Mexico with support from the Rockefeller Foundation. Many fellow scientists, in fact, during this time were skeptical about some of the methods that they were planning to use in this breeding program. They said it couldn't be done. But under the leadership of Norman Borlaug, who later received the Nobel Prize for his work, they not only developed rust-resistant wheat varieties uh, that are still in use today by farmers throughout the world, they also initiated a global program, the first of its kind, to leverage modern science for agricultural development. The impact? Worldwide, an estimated 117 million hectares of land were protected by the cultivation of rust-resistant wheat varieties ensuring food security for 60 to 120 million households. Let me take you through another example. Cassava. In the 1970s, farmers in West and Central Africa, a range of countries in that area, were faced with two separate but equally devastating threats to production. One was an insect, the cassava mealybug, that had been accidentally brought over from South America. The other was a disease, 
cassava mosaic virus that affected the root, the stem, the leaf of the cassava plant. To combat these threats, scientists, extension agents, and farmers pursued two different strategies. First, to halt the spread of the mealybug, they identified, tested, and released a natural predator, a species of wasp, to consume the mealybug larvae. Second, to halt the spread of the cassava mosaic virus, they developed and disseminated disease-resistant, high-yielding cassava varieties throughout the region. The impact? The biocontrol program with the wasp to prevent cassava mealybug spread averted losses on the order of about 2.5 tons per hectare of cassava production. The breeding program increased yields of cassava by about 40%. Ultimately, we're talking about 29 million additional people fed as a result of these interventions. And the impact has been particularly dramatic for cassava, transforming the crop from a poorly regarded food staple to a marketable commodity with a range of consumer and industrial uses today. And with that, I'll ask my colleague to continue with some of these examples.